It's time for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Coaches Show. On the right side to Hoytberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw. CJ, three is good! Got it! Bang! All right! CJ Wilcher is on fire! Lawrence on the other end lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams! Into the hands of Lawrence! The baseball pass and the jam! The jam Ola by Gary on the other end! Lightning Hawks for the basketball. And in the passing lane with a steal as Hoiberg jumped in front of everybody. Puts it up on the other end. Got it. Hoiberg gives Nebraska a shot in the arm. Defense turns into offense for Sam. Wilcher against Barnizer drives with the left hand. Got it. Circus shot by Wilcher. And the Huskers take the lead at 67-65. 15 on the shot clock. Now he comes to the left side after spinning away from Barry. High post on a pop out to Mass. Nine on the shot clock. The handoff on the shot by Tominaga. Got it! Got it! Bang! 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 Now with Adam Howard. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into our Nebraska men's basketball show. I'm Jessica Cootie, joined for the next hour with assistant coach. Adam Howard and uh, Coach, appreciate you joining us again. It feels like a heat wave out there, doesn't it? Yeah, nice to see some of that <laughs> snow uh, turn into a little mush where you can drive a little bit. But, um, yeah, nice. Expected to, you know, uh, looking forward to a good 30-degree day. Yes. You know, so. It's amazing how much different it feels coming off those negative uh, when it feels negative. You and I are both from areas that doesn't get this cold, so it certainly has been an adjustment. Well, big win over the weekend. Um, for you guys over Northwestern, uh, how good was that one? I know um, maybe not always pretty, but to find a way to win one of those close ones. Yeah, it was big. Um, you know, obviously, um, every night in this league, it's really tough. I mean, the margins, you know, victory are, are they're all two, three possession games. You know, we've had uh, a couple double-digit leads on the road and have let those slip away. But to, to find a way to uh, come home, regroup, you know, have a mature approach to uh, you know, the Northwestern game and try to set the tone with some physicality and, and some things that we didn't necessarily do at Rutgers. Uh, and then to do it with a little bit of adversity with, you know, Juwan yeah. being out was really big. So, How did you guys go about preparing this team and, and how you're going to approach things without Juwan? I mean, he's day-to-day, -day, don't know when he'll be back. So what's kind of the approach to prepare your guys when he has played such a big role in what you guys have done? Yeah, I think all year long, you know, our guys have handled it. We've had different scenarios with Josiah being out against Michigan State. Mm -hmm. You know, and Joe is uh, a guy that, um, you know, uh, is kind of like the heart and soul. His energy, his toughness, uh, you know, he's just a selfless player in terms of giving up his body and doing all the things that – you know, go into winning. So um, just proud of our guys. We've talked to them about it all year long. Rink's had some injuries and, and been out a few games with, you know, the surgery, missed two games, next guy up. So, um, you know, a lot of guys that, uh, you know, coach always leans on last year with the injuries and a couple guys going out and next guy's stepping up. And, and um, you know, we got a competitive group. The practices have been great all year long. And, and so, um, you know, I think everybody's uh, in a good place that if they know, uh, you know, that their name's called, they, they get an opportunity to go in. And, you know, Josiah obviously had a great game. Eli Rice came in and gave us great minutes, and we were struggling to score. He went to the free throw line twice and knocked down four free throws. So uh, just proud of our group. You know, it shows the resilience that they have and, and uh, you know, uh, the ability to go out and close, a, uh, close out a close game that we desperately needed to have. And, you know, talking about Josiah, a lot of the things that he does doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. But, the, you know, at Iowa and then this last game, he was able to really get going offensively. What has gone into that for him to, to score a little bit more for you guys? Yeah, you know, Joe is a guy that, um, you know, he's for 40 minutes every night that he's going to be locked into the game plan. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a, he's a uh, older, mature guy that, um, you know, has a, has a will to win. Just slowing down offensively, you know, playing with a little more balance in the post, uh, using his physicality. Uh, you know, he, he had, um, you know, a size advantage against Northwestern and, and just had a will to put the ball in the hole. You know, I think he's, he's, a, he's a kid that really works hard on his game day in and day out, and uh, you kind of have to tell him to stay out of the gym. He'll be in there all night long shooting threes and, and free throws. Uh, but so just to, you know, see his confidence come back, he went through a little bit of a uh, a slump there with some some confidence uh, uh, issues, but he's been great. You know, he's been in the gym, he's been working. Um, you know, with uh, with our staff and and just uh, trying to slow down. You know, be aggressive and and uh, you know work on his balance in the post. But um, you know, I think he's you know not only was he affecting the game. You know, on the court in practice. You know, uh, when we got back from Rutgers, 
he had a great mature approach. He was the loudest guy in the huddles, you know, making sure our guys stayed locked in and uh, finished the game out. So, um, you know, really thankful for his leadership, his toughness, and uh, his selfless approach to, you know, giving his body up every single day when he's out there and, and just having a will to win, like I said. You guys obviously are a very capable three-point shooting team, got a lot of shooters on the floor, but it seemed like from the start the plan was maybe to get inside to attack the rim. How much did you guys see that maybe on film? What went into maybe seeing that you could have some success getting inside and getting to the rim? Yeah, you know, they, they switch a lot. Mm -hmm. Northwestern, uh, they'll switch a lot of handoffs, a lot of ball screens. Uh, you know, and Joe is in some of those actions. So uh, right from the get, we, we ran a little action, saw they were switching with him um, and, and just wanted to be aggressive, you know, being able to get to the bonus. Uh, you know, I think we're one of the most efficient teams in our conference, you know, top three offensively. Uh, and a lot, a lot of that has to do with us being able to get to the free throw line and finish possessions out while making our free throws. So uh, not only attacking, uh, attacking the paint to, uh, to get opportunities for that, but to, to be aggressive and, and get to the free throw line. And, and uh, Joe uh, obviously uh, had, had a little bit of advantage, you know, at times when they switched some of the guards on him. So we wanted to get him down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we knew they were going to try to, you know, uh, post trap some of our guys at times and so find opportunities to slash uh get behind them in those uh those areas as well it was a big key going into it. how about the defensive effort on boo booey i mean you're talking about one of the elite scorers in the country and for you guys to hold him to nine points and it seemed like made things really hard on him it was a collect collective eff effort right for your guys yeah absolutely bryce williams was phenomenal uh and everybody sam hoiberg uh, did a great job on him too, but you know Bryce when he gets those assignments, uh, you know this year he's he's been really good. Uh, I mean he's huge. He's six seven, has unbelievable uh, length and athleticism, and so when he uh, you know has the ability to keep guys in front at his size, you know it makes it harder for guys like Boo Booey. You know we talked to him a lot about Nicholson, their post player. Uh, he was a top 55 offensive player uh, from an offensive standpoint, uh, a rating. Uh, in the country, and a lot of that had to do with Boo Booey, you know, coming off ball screens and finding him late uh, at the rim. And so we wanted to win the line of scrimmage, you know, in every ball screen situation, try to make Booey feel small and keep, uh, you know, keep Nicholson from getting behind us. Um, but credit to our guys, you know, um, like I said, Sam, Jamarcus, uh, Bryce, everybody that had that, our bigs. I mean, you know how hard it is to, you know, sprint up from the block, be at the level of the ball screen. Uh, win the line of scrimmage and then sprint back, uh, you know, so I give Joe and Rink a ton of credit, you know, in stopping him too. It's not just, you know, it's not a one-man thing. It's a five-man job when you're trying to stop, you know, a top five point guard in the country in Boo Booey. And, and the turnovers, you guys are, you know, have been a team that ta has taken really good care of the ball. So when you have a game where you've had a lot of turnovers, I think 18 against Northwestern, how do you guys go about addressing that, knowing that it hasn't been an issue, but it was an issue in that sure, game? Sure, yeah. I mean, we, like we talked about, I think, we had 16 field goals in the first half, and 12 of them were assisted, you know. And so, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with we've, we've had great spacing. We've got guys that can make shots. We've got, you know, uh, Rink can play in space. Uh, so we have really good offensive players. You know, the pressure has bothered us a little bit uh, here down the stretch with, you know, Rutgers and then, and then uh, towards the end of the game against uh, Northwestern. So, yeah, we watched them. You know, we watched every turnover and, and addressed it. And just, you know, there's a fine line and, and, and you know, wanting to still be aggressive. Um, but making sure we get a good shot uh, and, and get the ball where we need to get it to, uh, you know, to, to try to close out games and finish games. So something that we've talked about, an area we've got to be better at. Um, we're not going to find uh, ways to win too many games when you turn it over 18 times in this league. But, um, you know, fortunately for us, we were able to pull one out in doing so. But that's, an, that's certainly an area of concern and something that we've addressed and, and talked about at length the last two days. And there's been a couple issues the last few games with scoring droughts where you guys can't get things going offensively. What's the issue there with some of the scoring droughts? Yeah, I wish we knew, right? <laughs> you know, um, you know, just you know, on the road at, at Rutgers, uh, like a little adversity, some foul trouble, different stuff. Uh, their pressure really ramped up. You know, playing on the road at the rack is one of the hardest environments in the country. Yeah. Uh, their home court advantage when it gets loud in there, it gets it gets it gets pretty uh, intimidating at times. So. Um, you know, just having some poise, you know, being able to, uh, um, you know, use their, the other team's pressure against them, open up some, some cuts, you know, take what, the, take what they give you. I think we forced it, you know, feel it a little bit at times when you go two, three, four, five minutes without scoring. Um, you try to get all of those possessions back at once and just, uh, you just have to take it one possession at a time and, 
and take what the defense gives you and, and uh, you know, draw a foul, get to, the, you know, attack the paint, don't settle. So um, something we've, we've talked about as well, and, and hopefully we don't have those issues moving forward. Is there anyone specific that you really look to to maybe try to stop that drought? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've got a multi-handler system, you know, meaning all of our guards can bring it up. You know, the five-out stuff is, um, you know, I think great for, uh, for the way we play in our personnel. Um, you know, and coach trust, you know, all the guys that are on the floor, you know, like I said, our, we're, we're top three in the, in the Big Ten in offensive, of, of, uh, offensive rating efficiency. So, you know, we just have to handle the, that adversity a little bit better and uh, be stronger with the ball, get to the paint, and uh, get to the free throw line, manufacture some points, you know, when we're in those situations. Okay, so take me to the possession. It's 71-69, what, under 30 seconds to play. And you drop the, the play call for Casey to get the three that he knocks down. Take us into that huddle, that play call, how that all unfolded. Uh, you know, in those situations, late game, we want to try to put the ball in, you know, in, in, in Casey's hands. Uh, or, you know, typically the hot hand, you know, and most nights that's him. Um, you know, we always try to get some type of action with Rink, you know, being involved in it as well. Um, you know, kind of a facilitator when teams jump out. He's, he's done a great job of, of you know, um, feeling his man slip out and be able to, you know, attack the rim if, if they both go with Casey. But, you know, just like he's done at Purdue, you know, in other games, Indiana, um, you know, what we ran was kind of a different action. You know, we have a certain action. We like to get Casey and Rink involved in a two-man game at the top of the floor. But the specific action we, we typically run takes about four passes to get there. And with their pressure, we weren't sure that we could make that many passes and still execute. So uh, we went to another action that's just one pass to get into it. And, uh, um, you know, coach called it there on the sideline at the free throw line. And our guys got into it, I think, with about 12 seconds to go, in the sh you know, with on, on the shot clock uh, to see if we could get a good one and use some clock. And, uh, you know, I think Casey's ability to cut is, his, you know, it's, it's tough because we feel – or I feel, you know, coach got on to me the other night about complaining about it too much, but you can't simulate how hard he cuts, you know, and I think at times, you know, he gets held, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I think people try to negate uh, his ability to cut and his freedom of movement with putting their hands on him because they don't know whether or not he's going to slip to the basket or come to the top of the floor. Right. And um, he's one of the best I've ever been around at moving without the basketball. Well, and so we just wanted to put him some, some you know, some movement and, uh, you know, see what happens. But he went up to set a screen, slipped out of it, and both guys went with Jamarcus Lawrence and it allowed him to come to the top of the floor. And he's always, he's made the right play. You know, that, that situation, he had a wide open look and he took it. And, and I think there was an instance earlier in the game when they both went with him, the screener and his man, and he, he hit Joe on a little dump down. So, you know, Casey, he's not only a great shooter, but he's got an unbelievable feel, and he's a guy that we uh, feel real comfortable in ball screen situations and trying to get two on the ball because he always makes the right play. And so um, just wanted to get that uh, to Rink and Casey and let them figure it out, you know, and, and they typically done a great <laughs> job all year long of making the right play. Absolutely. How does that develop for someone like Casey, the, the being able, because moving without the ball, you said he's one of the best you've ever been around. How has that come to the point where he is that good at that? Yeah, I think just, you know, uh, being a dynamic scorer, you know, you're at the top of the scouting report every single night. You know, and if you're not in great, great shape uh, to get catches, if you don't cut hard to get catches, if you don't understand how to set yourself up, you know, to be able to move to where you get an advantage, uh, it's going to be tough. So I think um, he'd be the first one to tell you that no one's going to allow him to just come in and, and get easy catches and, right. and face up and, and take shots uh, uncontested. So he's had the, he's had the work to, um, you know, to move without the ball. And I think people respect his, you know, I think he's, last year he was second in the Big Ten in two-point field goal percentage. And, you know, that has to do with the system and, and uh, our, our big guys being able to pass. But... He finishes at the rim so well that it's, you know, you have to respect his ability to put pressure on the rim. And he just, he cuts with so much force. And it's something we talk about. And, and um, he's, he's phenomenal at it. And so I think he's just, uh, you know, with his size, uh, he's not really a true point guard. So he's got to be able to, you know, play without the ball in his hands. And, of course, his favorite player is Steph Curry. <laughs> and when the ball is not in his hands, you know, he watches him nonstop and the movement that he has. Uh -huh. and, and, um, and, and so he tries to emulate him a lot, you know. Um, during the play and after the play as well with his <laughs> celebrations. So, um, but um, he, he's phenomenal and, and a kid that plays with so much passion and, 
and um, you know we're, we're we're lucky we have him. You know, we had uh, Derek Walker on uh, right after the Purdue win, and, and he had talked about that and the chemistry and and how he and Casey played so well together. Now you're starting to see that with Rink. How did you guys see that kind of develop? I mean, obviously Rink's really good at that, and Casey's sure. used to that, but it's still it looks like they've been playing together as long as Derek and Casey played yeah, together. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And and when we lost Derek, we wanted to try to find you know, the closest thing to Derek as we could possibly find for uh -huh. Kese, you know, and for Bryce and for everybody else. Because Rink, you know, when you talked about the pressure earlier, he's he's been that pressure release for us uh, a lot of times this year. Uh, when teams ramp up their pressure, you get it to Rink in the middle of the floor, and we have action going on on both sides, and he's done a great job just like Derek did. So, um, you know, we lost Derek. Uh, you know, we wanted to be able to find, continue to play the way that we play with the five out. And last time we were on, we talked about Coach Holberg likes his skilled bigs that can yeah. pass and, yeah. and make plays. Uh, fortunately, Rink can also, you know, stretch the defense and make shots. Um, and, um, you know, so just wanted to find somebody that, you know, we, we could put in the same actions and, and can make the same reads as Derek. And, and Rink's done an awesome job with that. With Casey and his confidence, uh, you know, he's a guy has spent a lot of time in the gym, can shoot it. But on those rare nights that maybe they don't go in as well as they typically do, how do you see him respond with it? He doesn't change, right? Yeah. His no. confidence is there no matter what? Yeah. And it's like he, he was, you know, I, I don't know, he ended up with 14 points, 12 points, whatever it was against Northwestern. But we came to practice the next day, and it was, it was almost like that shot was just, he was just getting hot. You know, it was <laughs> like he stayed hot. You know, in practice, he didn't miss to start practice. Um, but he can, I mean, he just has to see one go in, you know, he just has to have a clean look. And, um, you know, if you watch the one he did make, you know, every, everything that <clears throat> you learn as a kid to hold your follow through, you know, that, that, that's not case. I mean, he shot it, pulled his release back and was fading away. And so <laughs> he, he didn't, he, he didn't lack for confidence and uh, he's just a natural born scorer. Um, probably one of the, you know, top 10 best shooters in the world. Maybe, I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, he, he's, he's. He's so creative in his shot making ability that um, you know he's he's special. So that can be maybe a bit of a challenge to figure out. Like, okay, we got to get his, but then still working in the other guys that can score too. Um, I guess what's your perspective on that and, and making sure that the team stays in a rhythm, but still allowing him to do what he does. Sure. Yeah, and I think all that you know naturally just works itself out the way that he's guarded. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, coach does a great job of putting Casey in actions to where he's kind of a decoy or a screener. You know, and and people have to make a decision on you know what they're going to do. And because Bryce is playing at a high level, and and CJ's you know, uh, at, I think going into the game last week. He had the third best offensive rating in our conference. Wow. You know, CJ in his minutes. So he's he's been great. So yeah, just you know, coach does an awesome job of, you know, being able to, you know, if CJ hits one, he's gonna try to get him another one and and um, you know, if that doesn't happen, you know, and that looks CJ, we, we get to the next part of the action, we call it the play within the play. And so, you know, we, we, we typically try to call something and if it's not there, we go to the next next thing and, and just keep great movement. You know, I think that's what's been really good for our team is you know, no one stands. You know, a lot of our stuff is is random, and we've have, we've got a lot of different things they can do um, out of our five out open spots. And so, you know, to our guys' credit, you know, I think when you come here, it's a it's a fun style of basketball. And if you and if you cut with force and you keep movement uh, and you have great spacing, the ball is going to find you. And we're, we're confident in every single person on the floor that they can make a play. All right, great stuff. Uh, we got to work in a break here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. 402-413-2400 is that number to text in. If you got a question for Coach Howard, he'll be with us for the rest of the hour. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammate's mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Hey, you're late. Cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. 
That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at CenexHometownThrowdown.com. Cenex, powered locally. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Nebraska men's basketball show, I'm Jessica Cootie, joined by Adam Howard for uh, the next 30 minutes or so, talking Nebraska men's hoops. Coach, uh, you had a lot of alumni here. It's a pretty special weekend. How much fun was it to get to welcome in all those former Huskers, honor Danny Nee, all of the above this past weekend? Yeah, it was really great. Um, we went to Rutgers earlier in the week, and I was walking out, and one of the ushers said, where's Danny Nee? You know, and so <laughs> it took me by surprise. But, um, you know, that guy's daughter was at Ohio University when Danny was there, and he just talked about how much his, uh, uh, his daughter loved um, Danny. And so, you know, pretty cool to see the impact he's left on the game of basketball and uh, great to have him back. You know, I know it had been some time and, and all those guys were at practice the day before uh, and to see those guys, um, you know, when you're a part of a team, you know, it's pretty cool when you get to see your former teammates 
um, years down the road and, and, and uh, see those guys get together. And then, you know, the night before was a lot of fun uh, in, at, the, uh, uh, at the dinner. Uh, Kent Pavelka did a great job. It was great to hear Danny Nee and some of his stories. And then just see how much, um, you know, all the former players, you know, admire Coach Nee. You know, there's nothing like a uh, player-coach relationship. And to see those guys, um, you know, uh, a lot of them were videotaping him talk and, and tell stories. And so it was really cool and, and a fun um, – Fun environment, fun, uh, fun weekend, and and great to close it out with a win. He can tell some stories, right? <laughs> he sure can. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's, he's he's a storyteller. He sure is. He's one of a kind. You know, I I found it so interesting just since you know we talked about honoring him and how many times Coach Hoyberg has brought up their recruiting him and just that relationship. You never know how many years, 30, 20, 30 years down the road when you build these relationships with these guys, how it can maybe come full circle like it has with Coach Hoiberg and Coach Nee. Yeah, it's a pretty great, uh, you know, story to hear him talk about having to tell Coach Nee no. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I can imagine uh, how long that home visit lasted after hearing him speak. I know <laughs> Coach said it, uh, that um, he's, he's quite the talker, and, and I saw that firsthand. But uh, no surprise to see uh, him have some, you know, success. And when you look at all the alums and what they're doing now, you know, all, how successful they've been, um, no surprise that that team, you know, uh, had, had a lot of success when they were here. All right, got a question for you on our text line. Mark wants to know, uh, Coach, is uh, Blaze Cada getting better? Love to see him. That's from Mark in Omaha. Yeah, yeah, no, great question, Mark. Uh, Blaze is progressing. Uh, this week was his return to play uh, week. And, and uh, you know, I know Coach uh, Hoiberg addressed it in his, uh, you know, press conference. Blaze will be available. Um, you know, I think moving forward, he'll be in uniform. Oh, that's um, good. But uh, I don't think, um, you know, uh, we'll have Blaze out there, you know, in too much, um, you know, early on. There may be some situations uh, where we'll need Blaze, you know, specifically like down the stretch at Rutgers when, you know, we had two of our five men foul out right. and we're at free throw blockouts, you know, being able to throw Blaze into a situation like that. But um, he's a long ways away from playing you know, 10, 15 minutes in a game. Uh, he just got done of, uh, with his return to play protocol where he was doing a schedule three days on, one day off. He'd been doing that for the last couple of weeks. Um, our trainers and strength staff have done a great job of getting him um, back to where, you know, he, he feels comfortable and, and uh, you know, working on getting him in game shape. But he's been in some non-contact stuff and, and uh, some half-court situations the last couple of days. And, and it's great to see Blaze back out there. Huge news. Well, speaking of uh, Juwan Gary, you know, we know he's day to day. How is he progressing? How's his uh, just overall demeanor and, and during this time where he's having to sit out again? I know that kills him. <laughs> yeah, you know, r really fortunate and happy for Juwan that it wasn't uh, what it appeared to be. Mm -hmm. He's been through some tough times already in his career uh, with injuries. Um, but um, uh, he's been in great spirits. You know, he's really attacked uh, the rehab part of it. Um, you know, like Coach said, he'll be a game time decision and, and slowly getting back out there today. He was doing some non contact stuff. Uh, we had a good little workout after practice, um, just, you know, trying to work him back in as slow as possible, make sure he's healthy. We still have a lot of season left, but, um, you know, Andrew McCabe's, our trainer's done a great job. He's had a lot thrown at him this year with Josiah being out for a game, getting him to return, Rink and his surgeries, and Bryce had. You know, a little bit of an ankle issue there, a uh, foot issue uh, at one point in the season, and now Jawan. So uh, Andrew's done a great job, spent a ton of time with Jawan, and, and Jawan has really attacked his rehab uh, and handled it, uh, um, you know, like a pro, as he should, and, and uh, doing, the, you know, the most that he can to try to get back there as soon as possible. Bryce Williams, it seems like he has maybe had a more aggressive mindset offensively the last few games. Is that something you guys challenged him to do? Uh, yeah, you know, Bryce is, you know, uh, an older guy, uh, you know, he, he plays a huge, huge role. You know, we ask him to, you know, like he, he got the boo booey assignment at six, seven and a half, mm -hmm. six, eight, uh, guarding a six, one, you know, six, two point guard. Um, but yeah, just <clears throat> finding ways for him to be aggressive. Um, he, he's just a natural score, yeah. you know, Bryce. That was what was so, uh, we were so attracted to, you know, in the portal with him when he was in there, his ability to make shots just score the basketball and so finding ways to get him in space a little bit more is something that uh, we've talked about and and uh, <clears throat> you know I think as he's you know each game goes along each week he's getting more and more comfortable out there but um, yeah I'd love to you know we'd love to see him you know be aggressive and because he's such a you know he's got positional size you know in the Big Ten you know you, that's something you have to have and 
Um, his ability to score the basketball is something that this team needs, and, and uh, Bryce knows he's got the freedom to be as aggressive as he wants, but um, we certainly need him to, you know, to be, be aggressive and try to make plays for us uh, down the stretch here in Big Ten play. We, we've seen him have the ball in his hands a lot more, um, and, and he talked about that. I, I, ta I chatted with him last week, and he had mentioned that taking on a role of that. As a staff, how do those conversations go when you start thinking, okay, maybe we move Bryce into this spot where he is handling the ball more for us? Yeah, you know, we didn't necessarily have too many, you know, conversations or meetings about it. it just kind of happened naturally mm -hmm. in uh, the flow of a game and, you know, um, you know, just how games are going, foul trouble, who's available, who's playing well. And, uh, you know, in our system, you know, the five out stuff, you know, it's, 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 you know, even when he's not starting at the one, he's got the ability to bring the ball up. And so, you know, we make sure those guys get reps at multiple positions and different situations, and he handles a lot in practice and, and uh, you know, has just done a great job of, you know, facilitating and making plays. So, um, you know, give him credit for, you know, being, you know, the willingness to slide uh, off, you know, to the ball in not a natural position for him, but he's done a great job and, and um, you know, again, allows us to, um, you know, do some different stuff with him at the one and Juwan at the three and, and Josiah at the four, Rink at the five. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, uh, great size on the perimeter and uh, in, in the interior, which you need, you know, in this league. Coach said after the, the win on Saturday that, you know, hey, he said he told the guys, I'm not going to come in here and dance around and throw water around because we're supposed to protect the home floor. How do you kind of start to see that mindset? switch with a team where we're supposed to win these games as opposed to like, hey, we're excited that we win to no, this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, just they, these games come at you quick, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to, you know, the Purdue game, you know, we saw that, you know, you, you got Iowa two nights later. So, um, you know, the, the more you win, the more, you know, you are target for people. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think teams have seen the last year and a half that, um, Pinnacle Bank has been a tough place to play, and uh, we respect, you know, uh, these fans so much, you know, for the energy that's in that building when, when they come out there that, uh, um, you know, we certainly don't want to let them down. And so, um, you know, the home games, you know, you, you got to win, you got to win your home games if you're going to play an NCAA tournament in this league. And then you got to find a way to steal a few on the road, which is really, really hard to do, not just in the Big Ten, but all over college basketball right now. Um, so. Um, yeah, just, you know, we've got a good team, like Coach said, you know, and so, you know, knowing that you're, you're good and having the confidence to go out there and execute and, and find ways to get wins, um, you know, it's, that's, that's what we're here for and that's what we're here to do. And, and I think our guys are, are taking on that mentality that Coach has been talking about. Love that. All right, let's get to another break here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Back with more coming up after this. Woodhouse Nissan makes shopping for your next vehicle simple. Browse our inventory, apply for financing, and more from the comfort of your own home. Right now, lease the 2023 Nissan Rogue SV for $299 per month for 36 months and 5,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax title license extra, $2,999 down or trade equity. First payment in $299 dock fee due at signing. $650 and Mac lease cash rebate available towards deal. Discounted price based on sale price of $31,450. VIN number PW484020. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. 
Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Welcome back to the Nebraska Men's Basketball Show. Jessica Cootie here with Adam Howard. Uh, Coach, you had talked about this. We've certainly seen it across the league. It is not easy to win games on the road. But what are you guys seeing that maybe your team's doing at home that is not necessarily or it's not translating as easily on the road? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, obviously we, we feel like we've got the greatest fans in college basketball. Mm -hmm. We talked about it just a minute ago. Um, the vault is, is a great place to play. Um, so when you go on the road, you know, you, you're, you're usually typically, you know, there's 15 people there that are wearing Nebraska. And, <laughs> and so um, just finding ways, like, you know, we've had, two games at Minnesota and uh, Rutgers where we had double-digit leads um, going into the second half and during the second half. And so just being able to handle teams' pressure, um, you know, Minnesota pressured us uh, a lot in the second half. We didn't handle that well. Uh, same thing at Rutgers. Uh, had some adversity with Jawan going out in that one with about 12, 13 minutes to go in the game. Um, Josiah fouled out. Rink fouled out. So, you know, being able to play without fouling, um, you know, keep our guys on the floor, main guys on the floor, um, and then just, uh, it'll happen. Just, you know, it's one of those things where it just needs to happen. And, you know, we've done it. We did it at Kansas State um, where, you know, I think Kansas State's second in the, in the Big 12 right now. Um, and so, um, you know, just, you know, playing with a little bit more poise, um, you know, do what, uh, you know, we do that makes us a good basketball team, share the ball, uh, be aggressive defensively. Um, and then, you know, we got to find ways to, you know, to out-rebound teams on the road. It, you know, this, like we talked about earlier, the margins in this league, are, are, you know, so um, few and far in between that it's, um, you know, just something like, you know, the offensive rebounds at Rutgers, um, you know, it, you're not going to overcome that when you give up 25 offensive rebounds. So um, just being, you know, as physical as, as we've been at home, uh, doing that on the road, uh, you know, and then just, um, you know, find a way to get one. You know, I think once that happens, um, you know, it'll, it'll uh, it, our guys will start to believe a little bit more. We believe now it's just, 
it's just one of those things that, that uh, you just have to go out and do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you got the next one at home, Ohio State here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena coming up tomorrow night. Uh, tell us about that matchup keys for the Huskers going in to maybe uh, get a couple back-to-back -back at home here inside PBA. Yeah, have another, um, you know, another great Big Ten point guard coming in here. Bruce Thornton is kind of the head of the snake for them. Uh, leads them in scoring. Really balanced. Um, have really good size. Um, you know, they put you in some tough situations in their ball screen stuff. Um, you know, have a 6'11 kid roll into the rim where they've got one of the, you know, most forceful ducking guys, Zed Key, um, you know, down there as well. So, and then they've got guys that can make shots, you know, in the ball screen situation. So they do a great job of trying to, you know, manipulate matchups and get, get uh, great looks. Bruce Thornton's playing at a high level, scoring and facilitating. Um, They've got Minnesota transfer um, Jamison Battle, who's shooting 44% from three, um, and uh, has great size when he's doing it. So um, just have to, you know, be really good defensively uh, at, you know, in the ball screen situations. We're going to see a ton of ball screens with Bruce Thornton, just like we saw against Northwestern with Boo Booey, um, you know, and, and limit them from uh, getting, you know, second chance uh, opportunities. I think they rebound 36% of their misses. They're a top 30 team uh, in the country in offensive rebound percentage. And I think last game against Penn State, he had 40 points in the paint and, and, and got to the free throw line 22 times. So I uh, have to protect the paint and then have to rebound the basketball. Coach Hoiberg talked about how good this team has responded off of losses, but when you get big wins, how important is it for this team to start uh, you know, responding and building and, and stringing together lots of wins in a row? Yeah, it's very important. You know, when you're, when you're talking about putting yourself in situations to make the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, you, you've got to protect your, your home court. Uh, you know, to win games in this league. You know, we have a plus-minus system we talk about. You win on the road, you're plus one. You lose on the road, it's even. Uh, you win at home, it's even. You lose on the road, you're minus one. And so uh, typically when you're putting yourself in position to um, be in uh, conversations to win a Big Ten championship, you need to be in the plus column. Um, and right now we're even. And mm -hmm. so uh, look, looking to stay even by winning at home and then going on the road to getting that plus, uh, plus column by still in a road game. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, to be able to be home two nights in a row means a lot, you know, for recovery. Um, we got a tough stretch, you know, um, after this Ohio State game, which will be, uh, you know, a real challenge in itself. You know, we go to Maryland, you, then you've got Wisconsin, who's probably the hottest team in the league coming in. Then you're on the road to Illinois and uh, in Northwestern. Um, so you just have to, uh, have to find a way to get it done, be physical. Um, and, um, you know, get our crowd into it. And hopefully we'll continue to have an awesome crowd. Looking forward to the students being back. Mm -hmm. Great to have them back and, uh, and, and get some more energy into the building. Awesome. Great stuff, Coach. Best of luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to let Coach Howard get out of here because we've got a conversation we want to bring you with Rink Mass. So keep it here on our Nebraska Men's Basketball Show. Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle and Light and Lean Dressing. Endless flavorabilities. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. 
and Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Shop now during the Start Something New sales event happening now at Woodhouse Jeep in Bellevue. The 2024 Jeep Compass is delivering unmatched performance. The 2.0 liter turbo powertrain with the highest standard horsepower and torque in its class. Lease the 2024 Jeep Compass Trailhawk for just $329 per month. Based on Jeep's compact UV subsegmentation using 2023 SIR and Edmunds cross shopping segmentation data, exclude EHEV, MHEV, HEV, and EV entrance. Based on the latest available information, 27 months, 10,000 miles per year for well qualified returning lease customers with approved credit, tax title license extra, $1,999 down plus first payment and $299 dot fee to its sign. Stock number BC24004. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. It's our final segment of our Nebraska men's basketball show. And recently I had a chance to sit down and have a conversation with Rink Mass. So I wanted to bring you that conversation here tonight. All right. Well, you are uh, midway through the season with Nebraska. How do you like being a Husker? It's been very cool so far. Really liked working with this coaching staff, and I mean, my teammates are awesome, and just really been enjoying how this city is responding to us, us playing well. Like it's it's fun when people come up to you and just say, "Good job, keep keep it going." That's awesome. Uh, was there anything like going into it that maybe you thought or didn't know that have changed, or maybe is different than maybe what you expected coming into it? Um. Just the amount of people that show up to every single game. Like, at my old school, we had a good amount of people that showed up, but the arena was every time, like, 60% full, 70% full. But, like, actually, the arena filling up all the way and always seeing, like, people sitting up all the way in the top in PBA, that's, that's pretty cool. So, on that note, how was it being a part of the, the court storm and getting to experience that with this fan base? That was, that was awesome. Those, those things don't happen that often in your life, so... That was that was special. Just I was I was a little slow because I was quite tired after the game, but got pushed in the back and just got brushed into the whole crowd and started jumping and yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I spoke with Derek Walker last week and he talked about that you guys had a conversation before the game, but then you guys shared a moment where you got to embrace. What did that mean to you to get to maybe share that with him? But then, I mean, because also you think about he was here last year, he didn't beat Purdue, but just getting to share that moment with him and, and that conversation. Yeah, obviously before the game, I watched a lot of uh, film, especially from him, because he did very well against Edie uh, the year before. And uh, kind of got surprised that he, he was there for the game. We didn't know he was coming. And then, like, an hour and a half before the game, game time, he walked in the locker room, which was pretty cool surprise and then gave me a couple more extra tips and wish this good luck and just seeing him after the game was like all right we we won that one yeah we weren't able to last year but got that one and yeah just special how much do you feel like your game has grown that was one of the things that you and I talked about in the summer when you decided to come here is you know working with coach Hoiberg how much do you feel like your game has grown even more being here and working with coach Hoiberg and this staff um I feel like I've Gained more confidence in my game. Um, played a little bit slower. Able to, I'm able to read the game a little bit better. Uh, really a confidence aspect, and really feeling like my shot is starting to really like pick up now. Struggle, I've got some struggles like earlier in the season, but feel like it's starting starting to trend the way that I wanted to trend. One of the things that Coach Hoiberg likes is passing big men so how much you feel like that is fit into what this offense is what your ability to pass the basketball and that was that was a big part of why I came over here I saw that Derek le let the team in assist last year and it was like I think I I can do that too I, l I love passing I love sharing the ball with my teammates and I think I got a good feel for it when when teammates are open so just like being able to fit into the system like that and being able to set up my teammates is yeah it's been awesome where does that come from? How did that develop as someone that is a, a bigger guy to be able to pass the ball like you do? Uh, just being around the game from from a young age and having that feel. And I, I mean, I like seeing my, my teammates be successful. And if you can set them up with good passing, 
that's like the easiest way to do it. Um, I mean, in Europe, we play such a like a, it's very team oriented. I feel like sometimes over here, it's a little bit more individually oriented with like uh, how big of an emphasis on individual points and stats in general is. So just that, like the team, the sharing the ball. I've I've always loved playing in teams that where everybody is unselfish and shares the ball, and um, just I hope to keep doing that. Why do you like that so much? Um, Passing and, and getting your teammates shots. It's, it's the camaraderie. Like that's that's why I play a team sport. Uh, there's there's a bunch of sports where you're more on your own and you have to compete on your own and be. The best you can be, but in a team, you have you got the guys around you that uh, everybody can support each other. So it's just that team feeling, and I mean, seeing the smiles on on teammates' faces that that makes me happy too. You've made the adjustment to move to Lincoln. You've played in the Big Ten. Is there something you've learned about yourself uh, since you've made the transition here to Nebraska? Um, I'm pretty hard to get down. I, I like to be positive, and there's not a lot that can, can get me down. I'd say the only thing is losing games, but other than that, I'm pretty resilient, and um, I've adjusted well to coming into a new environment where you don't know anybody, and you've got to pretty much start from zero. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've always attacked it with a very po positive mindset, and I think that if you stay positive and keep chipping away, then eventually you'll get to a good spot. And I think I've definitely found some good people here and really been able to settle into Lincoln very well. He's such a neat guy. I appreciate uh, the time with Rink Mask. I had uh, such a high basketball IQ. You just hear each coach that comes in here just really brag on him, how he's been able to fit in and uh, how much of a fit not only with his basketball skills and, and filling that kind of Derek Walker role of being able to pass, but also just um, his personality and his fit with the culture within the, the basketball program. You know, when I filled in for Greg last week on the TV show, Coach Hoiberg told me he's still – not even a hundred percent. They've had to be really cautious with him and, and limit him. So I think maybe you see a little bit maybe on the on the court, just uh, him not being one hundred percent right now in, in these last few games. But hopefully he'll get there, continue to get there, and then this team can get back healthy when it really uh, starts to count with Jawan Gary and, and Rink and everybody getting back right, uh, so that they can start peaking uh, about the time that you want to start peaking. But good news for this Husker men's basketball team. They've been very, very good at home, and they got another one at home at Ohio State tomorrow night, 6 o'clock tip. And we will be on the air for you with the pregame show starting at 5 o'clock with Jake and Kent. Boy, they've had some fun calling some games this year. I listened to them on Saturday, and uh, they have had a lot of fun. And uh, great for Kent. I know he had a great weekend with Alumni Weekend. He'll have some stories to tell, I'm sure, uh, next time we get a chat with him. And then they'll, head, they'll hit the road again. Need to... Find a way to, to find a, get a win and get in the win column on the road. They'll be at Maryland on Saturday. Early tip, 11 a.m. Cole was already complaining about having to be here so early with a 10 a.m. pregame show on that one. But we've got all the action for you right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Again, uh, tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, we'll be on the air with that pregame show. Well, we got a whole nother hour of sports nightly ahead. Guess who is back in studio? He's back from Hong Kong. Um, if you missed that, we will explain that next hour. But he is back from Hong, Hong Kong. Greg Sharp is in studio. So uh, we're glad to have him back. So we will talk all things, catch up on everything that has happened while he was gone over the last week. So keep it here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at Woodhouse. Woodhouse.com. Hour two, just ahead. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. 
Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers.
Good evening. I'm Henry Goodwin, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. In Husker track and field news, both the men's and women's teams are ranked in the top 25. The men are ranked 14th, and the women are ranked 24th. On the men's side, Henry Zimmerman ranks third in the country in weight throw, also breaking the school record. For the women, Jenna Rogers currently has the third best high jump in the country, and Mine de Klerk ranks fifth in the country in shot put. The Associated Press released their weekly men's basketball rankings, where three Big Ten schools made the list. Purdue is still ranked second, Illinois moved up to 10th, and Wisconsin moved down two spots to 13th. In top 25 college basketball, there's two games on today. Wake Forest is at North Carolina, uh, and currently at that game's at halftime. Wake Forest has a one-point lead. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, Cincinnati heads to number seven, Kansas. Um, yeah, and that game starts at 8. Our sports sticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. It's Williams, a drop step, reverse layup with a left hand, and Mast is just dissecting Edie early in this game. Deep left wing, Jazz Shelley to take the lead, you betcha! Shelley bobbed a triple from the left wing, and a big red lead at 36-34. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the floor, CJ, three is good! Got it! Bang, all right! CJ Wilcher is on fire! Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten freshman of the week with a triple. 15 on the shot clock. Now he comes to the left side after spinning away from Barry. High post on a pop out to Mass. Nine on the shot clock. The handoff on the shot by Tominaga. Got it! Got it! Bang! 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 They say Tominaga! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back, hour number two, Sports Island here on a Monday night. Good to be back with everybody. Jessica did a great job last week holding the fort down, but it's good to be back in Lincoln and ready for some big hoops this week. I feel like it's been forever since we've yeah. been in the studio together, but welcome back. I was Hong Hong. I don't know if you what, heard what the is story. That? What is that all about? So DB Damon Benningfield in last week hosted, co-hosted a couple of shows, and he kept saying Hong Hong, and Cole and I were like, what is he saying? So then we had to give him a hard time about it, but... Uh, how was it? Is it fun? Great trip. Had a yeah. great trip. My, da my daughter is uh, on an eight-month contract working for Disney Hong Kong, so we went over to, to spend some time with her. Had a great time. What a city. Yeah. My goodness. How was Disney there? Is it pretty cool? Oh, uh, it's nice. It's, yeah. it's a smaller park than Orlando, and so if people have been to the Orlando Disney World, it's not nearly that big, but she's having a great time. It's just a lot to do in that city, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of people, eight million people live in that some town. Did food? Had some good food. Yeah, yeah, the food was good. You know, it was, there was, there's a lot of Western influence in that town anyway. So yeah. you, you can find pretty much anything you'd find around Lincoln. But it was good. Long ways over there. Long flight. We appreciate you sending us a, a video. I kind of felt bad after I said that. Sunglasses on and a bright sunshine. <laughs> and it was like negative 30 here that day. I, I asked Cole, I go, <laughs> did you like my video message? He goes, yeah, it was fine. It was okay. I thought about playing it on the air. <laughs> you probably should have. Because <laughs> you uh, was like you were giving us a report. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, you, lucky for you, you missed some of the, the brutalness how of bad. the weather. That's, that's, I mean, you can't prepare for that. But it felt like a heat wave today. Like, Didn't I walked it, outside it today, did. and I was like, I don't even need a jacket today. It was melting <laughs> quite a bit out today. So I think we're through the worst of it, and, and hopefully so. So, And I know parts of the state are still maybe some freezing rain tonight. That is awful uh, for, for the, if you – I hate they, driving on that ice. They want to know what was the best food Greg had in Hong Kong. Children I tried corn. some squid. I, I wasn't a huge fan of squid. Like just – was it fried or cooked or – No, it was raw. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. No, Cole, Cole thank would be, you. Cole would be up for that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of Asian-type dishes that, that were on a lot of the menus that we went to. But it was fun. It was interesting. It's a, it's a town of 8 million in, 
to my eyes, it reminded me of San Diego because of it's kind of a seaport and you've got some mountains around the city. Obviously, it's bigger than San Diego, but that's what, it, to my eyes, it kind of reminded me of that. Huh. And oh. I'm a big fan of San Diego. And the weather was just like right there, 70 degrees almost the whole day. And how was the flight? Long. Long. Yeah, it's long. Mm. It's, it was 15 and a half hours from Los Angeles to Hong Kong. Wow. So, watched a few movies, caught up on some movies that I hadn't seen. That was kind of nice. That's good. Saw the latest Mission Impossible, which came out this summer. That's pretty good. Nice. So, good to be back here. And good to see that the Huskers got a win Saturday. You had Adam Howard last hour. You know, Jessica, there are times in a season when you feel like not a must win, but a big game. I felt like that was what Saturday was because they had lost the two previous. You don't want three or four game losing streaks. I thought that was huge. To get yeah, that and one. protecting the ball, protecting home court, yep. especially with um, how hard it is to win on the road. And, and as much as it's a frustration for Nebraska fans, look, that's a frustration for fan bases across this conference. It's just been really, really hard to get wins on the road. And so you've got to protect the home court. And so to be able to bounce back, and, and still it wasn't pretty. And you did it without Juwan Gary for really the first time for an ex, you know full game. He went out at Rutgers. But for him to be out of the lineup and to find a way to win without him there and to have still a, yet another scoring drought, but to, to have maybe some of those bumps in the road in a, during a course of a game, but to find a way to overcome that and win. And, I mean, it's not like Northwestern is just a cakewalk of no, a team. No, it's good team. So to be able to, to find a way to win when things weren't going your way, think about the Purdue win, right? They did just about everything right, and you, you win that game. But to, to win and beat a good Northwestern team where it wasn't always pretty is a big win because it – they certainly didn't. They weren't able to do that at Rutgers when they had that opportunity. So, big win, good, good win to bounce back, and again protecting the home court. So, yeah, they they need to do it again tomorrow night. There, you know, there's some things, and you touched on it with Coach Howard last hour that do concern you. The the, the amount of offensive rebounds they gave up to Rutgers is a concern, and that could be a problem tomorrow night. Ohio State really is a good rebounding team, and then these droughts. Both at Rutgers and then against Northwestern, where they couldn't score for eight, nine minutes. That's rough. And we have not seen this team fall into that kind of cavern until the last couple of games. So you hope that's just a quick little blip and that doesn't continue on. Yeah, and, and that's what I asked. I, how do you, who do you look to? How do you, yeah. what's the issue there? And, and, you know, again, filling in for you a couple of times with Coach Hoiberg, it seems like the issue is their ball movement and maybe and then they start to press when it maybe they you get go two or three minutes and then you're just putting up shots that you wouldn't normally take and just trying to force things and get it going but yeah certainly something but this is an experienced team they they've responded well and hopefully you know when they get back and look at that film they'll learn from that but yeah it, it's certainly been a concern that you have those droughts over the last couple of games because you know, it's it's one thing to do it one game, but you had it in both in first half and second half at Rutgers, and then you did it again against Northwestern. You can't do that no. and win games. It's certainly not on the road. So they've got to figure that out for sure. But, you know, I think with this veteran team and mature as this team is, hopefully they'll be able to address that and, and write that because that's definitely certainly a concern moving forward. This is a big stretch starting tomorrow. Well, it started really with Northwestern because Ohio State's a team that I, I think Nebraska's a little bit better than. Then they go to Maryland. Then they come home and here's Wisconsin, who I think is really good. And then it's at Northwestern and then somewhere else, back-to-back -back road games that are going to be difficult for this team. So it's never an easy night in the Big Ten Conference. Bob and Lincoln wanted to know, said last season on the road, the goal was to slow it down, switch up defenses, which seemed to work to slow down the opponent. This year we're doing the opposite. It doesn't seem to be working. I don't know that I agree with that. I think we are playing at a faster pace than we did a year ago, but we're deeper than we were a year ago. Remember a year ago, we didn't have Emmanuel, we didn't have Juwan by this point in time of the year. We're playing Sam and a couple other walk-ons we're getting times. So I think, well, I don't think we need to change our style. I think we need, I think, I, I think just rebounding a little bit better on the road and trying to avoid those scoring droughts. So uh, Bob, I, I don't know that it's not working. I, I think, you know, 
uh, we, we're a different team than we were 12 months ago, that's for sure. Last year, we heard it time and time again, they had to win being a defensive they did. team. This year, that's more of a team that can score a little bit yeah. more. And I don't know if I agree with them switching up the defenses either. They might have had to change some when the personnel changed, when Emmanuel Bandemel, Dewan Gray, when they started having those injuries, maybe they threw a couple different looks, but I don't think they switched up defenses a whole lot. I mean, I, I just... I think they might have played a little bit more zone last yeah, year. But I think, again, that was because of the personnel, because of the and injuries. And lack of bodies. I, I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, we're throwing different looks at people every single week. I don't know if that right. was what they relied on doing. And But, yeah, I, I think maybe there are a couple of instances where there are some breakdowns on the defensive end, like at Rutgers, and maybe not so much how they're guarding, but how they're rebounding is more of the issue. And so the offensive rebounds were a huge issue at Rutgers. And so I don't necessarily, because look what they did at Kansas State. That was a yeah. heck of a defensive performance right. when things weren't going well in the offensive. So I don't necessarily think that they have, are playing bad defense on the road. I, I think it's just, it just so happens that, and Iowa got real hot. I mean, that's a, that's a team that can, Coach Hoiberg said they're probably the hardest team to guard in, yeah. the, in the league because they just have, they're so, have so Everybody many weapons on the outside. Yeah. And so I, I don't know if we've seen t uh, enough of a sampling to say what they're doing isn't working on the road. And I think the Gary injury caused the flip in the Rutgers game. Yeah. I think when Jawan went out, that's when Nebraska really had trouble kind of hanging on at the end of that and they game. they had the foul trouble. And yeah. to me, it was less about what they were doing defensively, more what they were doing rebounding yeah. on the boards. And Juwan's probably the best rebounder. Yeah. So yeah. didn't have him for the end of that, that game. And the good news is it looks like he will be back. I don't know about tomorrow night, but it looks like he'll be back soon, sooner than later for this team. The women yesterday uh, got beat at Penn State. Now, Penn State's a good team. That's a, that's a quality yeah. team. That's probably an NCAA. So it's not a bad loss. But there were moments in that game yesterday where the Nebraska just didn't look very good. And, and the, that team, Amy's team, is just so, to me, really up and down. I, I got to try to even that out a little bit as we move into February here soon. Yeah, we had the Jessica Keller and uh, Julian Asibe on last week for the coaches show. And, you know, during the commercial breaks, I was talking to them, and they were concerned. It was a tough matchup. That's a tough matchup. Penn State, they like to push it. They're really athletic. But to me, I think, again, maybe a little bit of a concern is they haven't necessarily been as good on the road the last couple of trips. You look at, at Minnesota, True. at Penn State, yeah. and the, the women's Big Ten, you've got to win some on the road. It's not like with the men where you steal a couple. I think you've got to be a little bit better on the road, right? Don't you think with the women's side of things? Uh, yeah, I think there are th three or four teams at the bottom of the league that you better be able to beat on the road. Yeah. And I'm not sure there's that kind of a drop-off on the men's side. Right. I think it's, you know, not... And the not, next road game's going to be hard. Yeah, at Iowa. Yeah. I, and not trying to discredit, and, and certainly, as we've seen, with both of the net rankings are the same. So it's not like road games when you lose they kill you but certainly you need to win a few of those but they've got to find a way because they played really well at michigan state they played great they need to find kind of that performance again and 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 they just kind of dig themselves in these holes we've seen them getting into too big of a hole and then they make a comeback and it's just they run out of time and we saw that way back in november with like tcu game where they got way yeah. down and and they fought back but they've got to find they can't get themselves in those kinds of holes on the road because that's really hard to overcome um so they they did at minnesota they found a way to come back but then just couldn't sustain those runs and then again found themselves in a hole fought back had a chance there but you you cannot dig yourself in that big of a hole that's for sure the women are in, in better shape than the men as far as the net the women and that's primarily because the women played a more challenging non-conference yeah. schedule and i and i believe me i you and i've talked about this for the last year i think the men did exactly what they needed to do they right. needed to kind of suppress that a little bit and that's why the net's not better for nebraska but having beaten purdue and michigan state and at k-state i think the men are fine if they play 500-ish ball from here to the end but the women are in better shape because they played a tougher non-con. Yeah, and, and the men are going to have some opportunities. Well, and the women do too, let's face it. They do. But, but both these teams have some opportunities to get some signature wins being in the Big Ten. But for the men especially, 
you know, when they're looking at, they really beat themselves up last year in the non-conference. And so they had one of the tougher non-conference schedules. Then they had guys in and out of the lineup. You'd had Derek, you didn't have Derek to start. Then you get guys get hurt. And so it really, really put them behind the eight ball. And then they started playing some of their best basketball at the end of the season, but it was too late by yeah. then. So when you've got all these new players coming in and you're trying to gel and you have such a tough conference schedule, you can do that. But they still have some opportunity, certainly, to get some of those big wins to go along with that Purdue win and to maybe get some signature wins on the road here and you're still okay even though you didn't schedule as hard but the women have a little bit more leeway with that but they also have a chance to get some really big time wins here on on their schedule too and and even if you look at that game against Minnesota yes you lose it on the road but you have a chance to avenge that at mm -hmm. home so some of the right. the losses do they play Penn State again I no it, I don't think yeah. so oh I can't remember. A couple of the teams that they have losses against, they have a chance to avenge that loss. And so that's a good opportunity to be able to say, yeah, we, at least we didn't get swept by them. You know, we split in, in, our, in the head-to-head. -head. So many, because of the size of the league, you very rarely get to play a lot of these teams twice. I'm looking up the schedule real quick here. I don't, I'm not real familiar with the February schedule. Uh, they know that they play. No, um, they don't. They do not play Penn State again. Yeah. So, all right. Um, the, the music was pumping in the concourse, so the Husker football staff must have somebody on a visit. I, I don't know who's in town. They had a really good junior day weekend. A lot of ju high school juniors came for visits. That, that was a big success. I saw Matt Rural and, and Marcus Satterfield were out recruiting today. Ed Foley is making his way around the state again today. Saw him tweeting from different high schools around the state. So busy times. It's week two for winter conditioning. The guys are back at it again and uh, getting under coach campbell's tutelage down in that weight room yeah and hopefully we'll have a chance again to talk to coach campbell once they get through some winter workouts because it'll be interesting to see his approach to year number two and now that guys because it's hard it's yeah. tough and this was a, a really kind of a establishing the culture type of time a year ago and so how does he approach year two and getting a lot of those guys back to have a familiarity on, on it but yeah it's been a busy the entire time you were gone it seemed like the the concourse was pumping with music they had the skies lit up and with the reds and the scoreboards and the the highlights were playing throughout the concourse so they've uh, whether it's be transfer guys or junior day they've they've been busy you, just because it was signing day back in December and they signed it, it's and the transfer portals closed boy they are still um, getting after it and, and trying to bring in some guys and and continuing to recruit for the next year and the next year so it's they have not had much time off since uh, the signing day. Never slows down, does it? No, it does Just not. constantly goes. There is another signing day. You still have the traditional right. February signing day. I don't think Nebraska will do much with that. Uh, there are fairly significant number of guys over the limit right now. But they were able to get some of those transfers on what are called NIL scholarships. Uh, that are they're walking on to the football team and being taken care of by the NIL, which is going to help some of the numbers situation moving forward. We have put a request in to try to talk to the new quarterbacks coach, Glenn Thomas, hoping maybe to have that happen sometime this week. We'd love to sit down and talk to him about taking over the, the position coach for that quarterback room. And speaking of that, we're going to hear from Daniel Kalen here in just a couple of minutes, one of the young freshmen that's about to uh, step into Lincoln. The Polynesian Bowl was over the weekend. You had Dylan Rayola playing over there. You had Carter Nelson playing over there. Preston Tamutu was also over there playing. And apparently Dylan did some nice things in that All-Star game. Yes, yeah, also the highlights, and not just him, but Carter Nelson. They both yep. made the most of that opportunity. So they were, uh, they were hit. For sure. Good stuff. So Daniel Kalen coming up here in just a little bit. If you want to crack at us, 402-413-2400, or you can fire off a text, same phone number, 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to hear from Daniel Kalen. The quarterback from Bell West, now going to be a Cornhusker. In fact, he's already on campus. We'll hear from him next. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. 
It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Experience the thrill of the open road with Woodhouse Chevy. Whether it's the city streets or rugged terrain, Woodhouse Chevy delivers an unparalleled experience. Lease a 2023 Chevy Traverse LS for $449 a month for 36 months, 10,000 miles per year. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy with approved credit. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing. Must have GM lease loyalty or lease conquest to qualify. Offer expires 131-2024. See dealer for details. Life is busy. Wouldn't it be great if someone could help you manage your insurance? Well, I do have a lot to keep on top of. Between the house, my life insurance, the car. Like you said, life is busy. A local Trusted Choice independent insurance agent can help you with your research, coverage selection, pricing, and claims at no extra cost to you. Which means I'll have more time to spend on other things. Trusted Choice independent insurance agents. We'll help do your insurance. You just do you. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Lebanon. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built for tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. Purchasing your next car, truck, or SUV from Woodhouse Ford is easier than ever thanks to our streamlined buying process. Shop our current inventory and offers going on now and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford today. Lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX for $449 a month for 39 months, 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing with approved credit. Security deposit waived. Vehicle is a retired courtesy loaner. Stock number FC231453. Offer expires 131-2024. See dealer for details. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Well, we talked about Dylan Riola having a good Polynesian Bowl where he did some good things. He's on campus. Class has started today for the spring semester at UNL, but he's not the only true freshman quarterback that's now part of this football program. The other one is Daniel Kalen, who is from Bell West High School, signed with Nebraska back in December, and on signing day, Jessica had a chance to catch up with Daniel. 
And we welcome in the quarterback out of Bellevue West, Daniel Kalen. Daniel, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations, officially a Husker. How does it feel that signing day is here, not just for yourself, but a lot of these guys that you helped recruit to come be a Husker? Yeah, it feels incredible. Um, it's been a long time coming for sure. Um, definitely an exciting day. And um, yeah, like you said, not only me, but a lot, of, a lot of great athletes that are signing today. And I can't wait to get up in Lincoln with those guys. Okay, so, so take me through your recruiting process. I know you had a, a lot of interest, a lot of schools, and, and were committed. And then here comes Coach Rule and company. What, what was it about that cell? What was it about those relationships that you built that you knew that this was the spot for you? Yeah, I think right away when Coach Rule, um, you know, was named the head coach, he had reached out to me and we were able to talk. Um, and then I was able to get up on campus pretty quickly and meet Coach Satterfield, Coach DeMichael, connect with Coach Rule even more. Um, so really just from the start, I feel like I had a good relationship with them and I really kind of connected with them well. Um, obviously, you know, there are other schools that I liked as well and I, I went through the recruiting process. Um, but in the end, I do feel like I definitely made the right decision. It's where I wanted to be um, and, and I can't wait to be up there. So being a Nebraska kid, how did that feel when that offer, that first offer came in and to be a Husker? Yeah, when I, when I first got the offer, um, it wasn't from this staff, but... Um, it, it was definitely a surreal feeling. Um, it's something I've been working towards and something I wanted for a long time. So um, to hear that I had offered to the University of Nebraska was crazy. Um, and then to finally commit, you know, after a few years, a few more years down the road from the offer, um, it just means the world to me. And I can't wait to start getting to work. But um, I think everyone, especially people that have grown up in this state, knows what knows what Husker football means around here. And so I don't take that lightly. And, and it definitely means a lot. So then immediately once you commit, you go to work helping to recruit your fellow, uh, fellow guys in this class. Why was that important for you from the start to get involved in that? Yeah, you know, I think especially in football, it's a team sport. Um, and, and, and especially the quarterback position, um, you know, I need guys to protect me. I need guys to throw the ball to. You need a good defense. So uh, I just think the better guys I have around me, um, you know, the better the team's obviously going to be. And so I want to be in, as active as I possibly could in recruiting and um, not only to get talented guys around me, but also to start developing relationships um, with my future teammates. So um, that was definitely important to me. And, and it, it was also a lot of fun as well. So you're building relationships, not just giving a sell, but what was your sell to come play with you and be a, a Husker and, and play at Nebraska with you? It was really more just trying to sell um, what Nebraska football has to offer um, what, what it would look like if, if this place, um, you know, was, was really, really successful like it has been in the past and, and what the coaching staff, um, I believe that they can do. So um, that's really what, all I did. I tried to, you know, be genuine, be myself. Um, you know, I, I think just being genuine and developing those relationships is, is really what mattered. Okay, so you have a couple of teammates coming with you from Bellevue West. Let's talk about them individually. First of all, give us your perspective of Dave Vaughn for Husker fans listening in that, that might not have seen you guys play. What's he like? What can we expect from him? Yeah, the, the funny thing about the, you know, the two guys above U.S., and obviously we'll start with Dave Vaughn, is, is they, have, they play the same position, but they, play, they have different play styles. So, um, you know, Dave Vaughn's more of the straight line speed, bigger physical receiver, you know, get up and – and in high point of ball, um, he's going to make a lot of plays. He even played defense for us this year as well. So um, just a dude that's going to come in, and he's been a Husker fan. He's growing up around here, and so he's just going to work hard, and um, he's definitely an electric type of player. Um, so I, that's where you're getting in, Davon. All right, now tell us about Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah is someone I've known for um, a little less longer than, than Davon, but um, he's, like I said, on, on the different kind of side of it, he's – um, he can still go deep. He can still take the top off the defense, but he's more just get the ball in his hands. He's going to make plays. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those players that you can just throw a hitch and he's going to take it to the house and, and make you look a lot better than you are. So um, he's, he's going to be a great player, also works really hard, and we have a good relationship. Okay, so I want you to take me back. Little Daniel, when did he first start playing quarterback? Why did you fall in love with the position? And, and where did the dream come to play college football? Yeah, I, I've been playing quarterback, or not quarterback, I've been playing football for as long as I can remember. Um, the first team I actually remember playing for is when, when I was in kindergarten, and Grant Winstrom was actually my coach in Springfield, Missouri. Um, but growing up until about sixth grade, I always um, loved receiver. I loved playing receiver. 
Um, I'm a Giants fan because I grew up being a, a big Victor Cruz and Odell Beckham Jr. fan. But um, I remember it was summer going into – or spring of sixth grade, my mom saw an ad for a, um, a quarterback coach, like a quarterback lesson, and I went. And really just from that point on, I've been playing quarterback, and I fell in love with the position. So um, I've been playing that ever since. Um, and it's, it's really just – um, a huge priority in my life is, is playing football and being a quarterback. And it definitely means even more um, to play. No, I'll be playing at the University of Nebraska. What did you love about the position then when you, when you first went to that first lesson? And, and what'd you fall in love, why did you fall in love with it? I just think, I think there was a lot more detail and, and, and cerebral parts of the game than I realized at that, at that point in my career. Um, you know, especially in today's game, so much of playing quarterback is – is you know uh, above the shoulders how how quickly can you process information how well can you know the plays and and all all the, all the things that come with that so i think that's really um what kind of sold the position to me and why i fell in love with it um i think a big piece of it as well is the leadership portion um you know i have the ball in my hands at all times i'm the person that the team's going to look to um in good and bad times and so i think that's also a, a big piece of why i love playing quarterback so what are the, what's next for you? What are the goals? You're going to be here early, right? Um, what what goes into that? What what do you need to do to continue to develop and and maybe be able to contribute as a as a freshman? Yeah, you know, especially this next um, little over a month. But I didn't take a lot of time off after the season. Um, you know, I, I want to get right back into working hard and getting ready to to be up in Lincoln. So it's really just. Lifting, developing my speed, getting bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, I have some great quarterback coaches, uh, Coach Taglin that I work with in Omaha, and Coach Hoover in Kansas City that I'm going to be throwing with over the next month. Um, and, and really just doing what I've, what I've always done. You know, and the, at the end of the day, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you just got to stay true to your training of, of what's got you here and just continuing to grind and work hard. Um, and then, you know, just when I get to campus, it's really just the same thing, just working as hard as possible, learning the playbook, being in the facility as much as I can. Um, and at the end of the day, it's always a competition. If, I'm, if I end up getting on the field, you know, it's obviously what I want. But um, at the end of the day, I'm just going to compete and work as hard as I can and, and develop, as, develop into the best quarterback that I can be. You've talked about the cerebral part of it. Do you, does it excite you diving into the playbook, getting to know that, study that, all the ins and outs of all that? Yeah, that's always super exciting. Um, I remember when I first got to Bellevue West, I was super excited when we first started installing plays. And so um, I'm definitely excited. I know it's a way more complex offense than, than at the high school rep level for sure. Um, and, and that's definitely exciting. Um, you know, I'm excited to just really just, just dive in fully um, and start learning the playbook. Okay, uh, last serious question I got for you. How, you. You spent a lot of time getting to know this group. How much do you like this signing class, this this Signing class that signed on the dotted line today to come to Nebraska. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, you know, like you said, I, I tried to help as much as I could with recruiting, and it really has brought me close to a lot of those dudes, um, especially some of the local guys that I've already known for a while, like Donovan Jones, Carter Nelson, Grant Bricks, um, and Keelan Smith, and then the guys that are out of state, like Ja'Cory, um, Gibson Pyle, you have Jake Peters, and I can name them all. I can keep going, but it's just a great group of guys, and I just can't wait to, to be around them every day and start getting to work. Okay, got some fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. You, you kind of mentioned this. I'm all not right. sure if it'll be the same answer, but who was your favorite player or athlete growing up? Yeah, I, I would say probably Odell, mm -hmm. Odell Beckham Jr., um, I used to. I actually had a perm. Um, I had a perm because I wanted my hair to look like his. So, um, but I would say first was Victor Cruz because I actually read his um, his book when I was in third grade, and I, I remember used to. I used to do the salsa when I was score and flag football. But um, yeah, no, I, it's it's probably those two guys because I've been a Giants fan ever since I read that book. That's awesome. Do you have a picture of the perm days? Uh, I, I have a video. You can actually go on my Instagram. It's uh, I un I unarchived it. It's like the first Instagram posts on my page. It's a video of like me doing these fake water bottle flips, and you can see the permit. I, I definitely have some photos as well, but um, <laughs> yeah, we got some evidence of the the we, perm days. We might have to bust those out. Okay, what's your favorite yep. hobby outside of football? Hobby outside of football. Um, I would probably say I like I like playing cards a lot. I love really playing any other sport, so I like playing pick up basketball or pickleball or whatever it is. Um, and then I honestly love to travel and be in nature. I'd probably say those things are 
um, some of the biggest things I like to do outside of football, but um, I definitely keep football a pretty big priority in my life. So, You got a favorite card game? You a pitch guy? Um, I, yep, pitch is definitely up there. Um, dummy rummy. I play cribbage, um, golf. There's, there's a lot of games. I, I can really play any card game and, and have a good time. I've heard two of those four. Okay, uh, favorite cereal? Favorite cereal? Um, I would probably say either, I'm pretty basic, probably Honey Nut Cheerios and um, Lucky Charms. Love it, love it. Okay, I want you to rank these cookies, all right, from one through okay. four. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. All right, oatmeal raisin definitely lasts. <laughs> uh, and I'll probably do peanut butter. And then, I think it's almost a tie with chocolate chip and macadamia nut. I, I feel like macadamia nut cookies are definitely underrated. Okay, I love it. And I also love that you have oatmeal raisin last, because that's been a big debate here on our Huskers Radio Network. I'm sure you know Damon Benning. He's a big oatmeal raisin guy. I hate oatmeal raisin, so I'm glad you're on team dislike oatmeal raisin. Uh, Daniel, thank yep. you so yep. much for your time. Appreciate it. Congratulations again. Yep, I appreciate it. Thank you. Man, he's a... Uh... Just such a smart guy, and what a great story. You know, he wants to stick it out. He had an opportunity, wants to be here. And look at last year. I mean, it took three quarterbacks. It, take, it took three quarterbacks a year ago. And sure one thing about this coaching staff, they're not going to hand anybody a starting job. you got to nope. come in and earn it. So the more you, you need the depth in the quarterback room, you need that competition. And, you know, here's another Nebraska kid who was a big part of recruiting, helping recruit this class and building those relationships. So I'm glad he's still coming, and I'm glad he's here already and, and can uh, hopefully make a big impact to uh, whether it be as – you know, the, the competition in that room, a leader, whatever it might be. But I think um, kudos to him for wanting to come here and compete. And, uh, you know, it's nobody's job right now. They, they got to come in and earn it. He will fight hard. He was such a great recruiter, too. Once he yeah. committed to Nebraska, he really pushed hard to get other guys to come here as well. So he's on campus. He's going through those winter workouts uh, with the, his now Husker teammates. Good to hear from, from Daniel there. Folks, if problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment. Just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. 402-413-2400. We're back with more of the show next. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hey mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. When you're clocking out and happy hours already started. But you're clocking out and happy hours already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Build Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Well, Abraham from Granada was chosen as tomorrow's game contestant for putt for a Porsche. Brought to you by Porsche Omaha. If Abraham makes the putt on the court at halftime tomorrow night, he's going to win a 2024 Porsche Macon. You could be the next contestant in one of the remaining games. For more information and get the official rules, go to huskers.com. Slash putt. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you Monday night here on Sports Sunday. No show tomorrow. Husker basketball as they take on those Buckeyes, and we'll be rooting for Abraham to make the putt. Art in Los Angeles, welcome me back. Want to know what my best and worst experiences were in Hong Kong. They have a huge, it's the Hong Kong Jockey Club, big horse racing facility. So we went. They have Wednesday night races. The place was packed. Huh. Huge facility, big grandstand with the suites and all that. And so they have eight they had eight races. By the time we got there, I think they were into race two or three. We didn't say the whole time. I bet three straight races and I hit all three. Oh nice. Didn't bet enough. <laughs> but it was fun. That's fun. It was fun. I like going to horse races. Well, is there, is there still a track in Oklahoma City? Yeah, there is. Right by the Women's Golf Softball. World Series. Yeah. What's the name of that track? Remington Park. Remington Park. Yeah. So Quarter that, horse races. That was fun. So, Art, that would be one of the highlights. That was great. I had a good time with that. And also, um, I went and saw Big Buddha. So that was cool. You had to take, a, you had to take a, a tram up into the mountains to see Big Buddha. It's a huge Buddha statue. Yeah. I watched the, I think it was featured on The Amazing Race. They, they've done a lot of episodes there. Yeah. And is it, I guess, probably is even bigger in person than it even seems it's, on TV. It's good size. Yeah, yeah it's good yeah. size. It's, it's big for a reason. And, and everything was really clean. Just I mean, Even like the public bathrooms were just really clean. It was kind of nice to, to see. So those are some of the highlights of that. But certainly kept track of the Huskers while I was over there and looking forward to this game tomorrow night with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Also looking forward to everybody's weekend winners Henry is helping Cole out tonight to get that done. How did Cole's joke go over last week? Well, I wasn't paying attention when he read it, so I missed the punchline. Oh. So that's why I didn't get it, Cole. I went back and watched it. I got it. But I was trying to pull up my own joke, and so I should have been locked in on Cole's delivery, so I apologize. That was my bad. But um, it went over pretty well. 
the week before went over pretty well, too. Good. He's on a bit of a roll. Yeah. I had one earlier today for Cole. He laughed. Are you going to... Well, I'll do it. Cole, yeah. can I do it? Yeah, you can do it. Where does a snowman keep his money? Where? In a snowbank. Snowbank. <laughs> That's it for this segment, folks. we got to get out of here. All right, back with our weekend winners. We'll do that next. Let's face it. Nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery, without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor? Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe. Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using Hair Grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try Hair Grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to NewNordicUSA.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with Hair Grow by New Nordic at NewNordicUSA.com. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network broadcast studio brought to you by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and a whole lot more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you. Final segment of the night. We mentioned the Oscar women are off until Saturday. They'll be at Iowa. Caitlin Clark is good to go even though she got <laughs> ran over in the court storm at Ohio State yesterday. Is, is that your weekend winner, the... No. The Ohio State fan. I was just fan. seeing if my, my verbiage of she, she got ran over is, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's kind of a little bit sometimes like how she tries to get calls on the court. is a little bit floppy, but hey, I mean, it was a little bit of a dangerous yeah. situation. And, you know, it still was a fan was running on the court when she was running off. I think it was a little dr bit dramatic, but I mean, it is. That's a scary situation. And we heard her team say that, but I mean... I don't know. It was a little bit of a little bit of a flop, but if she did get, they did. There was a collision on the court. They did make contact. Yes. She had what forty five or something in yeah. that game. It was a heck of a game. Yeah, I watched that game. It was a great, really great game. Ohio State's good. I, you know, I think those are, and Indiana we know is really good. I think those three teams are really could make a deep run into March. I think the Huskers are somewhere kind of right behind that group right now. Not that they can't climb the ladder. Alexis Markowski, what a game yesterday. 19 boards. Yeah. Unbelievable. When Nebraska plays their best and they're clicking on all cylinders, they can absolutely play with some of the best in the league. But, you know, it's just sometimes on the, as we've seen, on the road, get themselves in a little bit too much of a hole before. But when they put those runs together, boy, they're hard to stop. They've got a lot of offensive weapons when they can get it all going. Yeah, they do. All right, time for weekend winners. You want to lead us off? Sure, I'll go. I'm going to go with Jason Kelsey. He uh, retires, and then he's in attendance, <laughs> having the time of his life. 
celebrating his brother. He's like shirtless in the suite. He's taking little girls up to meet Taylor Swift. It's pretty cool. Uh, celebrating, partying with the Bills fans. I mean, it just the the way that you could see how he was able to just kind of let loose. I in one of the what what a gr great ambassador for the sport. He's great guy and has done so many things for the NFL. I know he's been a great representative, but. You know, to see him really be able to let loose and celebrate and enjoy his brother, I thought that was fun to watch. You yeah. know who he has taken Cam Jurgens under his wing? Yes. He really pushed the Eagles to draft Cam, yep. and then Cam got to play guard this year, and I think now he'll probably go over to center. But and I'd what love a great to talk experience to, to get to play alongside oh. him. You know, it's one thing to to back him up in the in the meeting rooms and to hear him, but to just play alongside him and see how he managed a game within the game, actually being on the field next to him, he probably learned a great a deal. Ton. Yeah, just even just this season being next to him on that line. I feel like, I feel like Kelsey's still got game in him. I, I don't know why he's, I, maybe he's just ready to be done with that phase of his life. I don't know. Yeah. Still playing at a really high level. He is, but you know, sometimes it just gets to that point where you're like, I just don't know if I can do this again. It's a lot, of, he's lot got on kids your body. And, yeah. You know, just maybe ready to hang it up. Yeah. All right. Who's first, Henry or Cole? Uh, Cole's Cole's up first here. I've got a split winner between Josiah, Alec, and yeah, Kase. Okay. Josiah, he's just the last few games really found found a rhythm, especially with Jawan out and Kase to be ice cold like that uh, down the stretch of that Northwestern game. Big, big shots. Casey's really hit those, particularly at home. He's been able to hit some huge shots. And Josiah, my goodness, the with Gary out to get the offensive output they got out of Josiah was terrific. I'm really happy for him. Uh, easy guy to root for. We kind of knew that when we got him last March. He'd be a fun guy to root for. Good, good picks, Mr. Henry. Back in school after six weeks off. Although you did do an intercession course, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I uh, had a. Little online class on mythology. Mythology? Yeah. Really? Greek wow. mythology. It was Did fun. You, what was the highlight of that class? Uh, f finishing it. <laughs> 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 nice. All right. You have a winner for us? I do. Uh, I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions. Nice. Just the whole kind of comeback story of, yeah. you know, they were 0 and 16 or whatever. And, you know, now they're in the conference championship. Great story. That town has not seen much football success for decades, so for them to do that is pretty cool. Hey, you know, on that note about taking an intercession course, I, N Natalie Potts took like a theory of coaching baseball or something like that. It was like a... In the last couple of weeks she yeah, did? Yeah. I should ask about that again because it was like wow. some sport that she was taking an intercession course huh. in over the over Why the last few weeks. Why would she do that while she's in season? That's crazy I, to me. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to ask her about it again. I got to follow up on that. That made me think about that. All right. You know I love watching golf and stuff. My winner is Nick Dunlap, the first amateur to win on the PGA Tour since 1991. He's an Alabama golfer. Went out there and beat Sam Burns. Uh, some other big name guys were on that leaderboard as well. What a cool accomplishment for him. Doesn't get the paycheck because he's an amateur. So the $1.5 million that he would have got had he been a pro, he doesn't get. Where does it go? It goes into the pot for the rest of the guys to divvy up. Wow. But he does with the win. He gets invited to the Masters, gets to play in the Masters. I think he gets to play in all the majors this year because of the the win and uh, he'll play in the Century Tournament of Champions next year to start the year. How cool is that though? A college kid goes and wins on the PGA Tour. Awesome. Great experience and to also get the opportunity to play in the Masters. I know that means even more Huge. than the money probably to most of those guys. Andy agreed with you. That's what he said. Oh, right he as you were saying that, he said that's who his winner yeah. was. Yeah. Oh, just a cool story that, that took place yesterday. All right. Good to be back tonight. No show tomorrow. Basketball back Wednesday. And by the way, Wednesday is our athletic director show for the month of January. So Trev Alberts will be here hour one. Bookmark it. We want you to be listening in on Wednesday night. Thanks to Henry and the, the Steady Hand Colio. Uh, good to be back with everybody here tonight. We'll talk to you again on Wednesday. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, Chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. 
Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse Place Nissan makes shopping for your next vehicle simple. Browse our inventory, apply for financing, and more from the comfort of your own home. Right now, lease a 2023 Nissan Rogue S for $199 per month for 36 months and 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax, title, and license extra. $6,250 down plus first payment and $299 dock fee to its signing. Discounted price based on a sale price of $28,684. $2,000 and that cash available towards deal for qualified customers who select standard APR rate. VIN number PC926399. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram.